Hi guys, so today I have this fun, fresh, tropical set that uh, Diane Press has brought to HSN. It's the Welcome to Paradise stamp and die set. And let me just get this popped open. So they did send this item free of charge for my review, and of course all opinions are my own. And any links I have in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items to those links. So thank you for using those if you would like. And um, I will update the links going along into the craft day. So, you know, all the available items are linked there possibly in the little shopping bag here or maybe under the word shop um, you can check those out just different ways to access them but they're always going to be in the description box especially <laughs> okay so um look at this this is a nice size okay good and i hear you guys say that all the time it's very hard to tell like the sizing of things that's why i like to give you measurements um even if it's a close-up you know on tv or however but uh, i hope you get all the info you're looking for because i didn't expect these to be this large either so um again uh the new kits come with two of the sticky sheets and again if you want more refills of these if you enjoy them you can get them on mydiamondpress.com i do have a 10 percent discount code there vcdp10 and for whatever reason, I, there we go. You know why? That's funny. I usually peel it this way, so you can tell the difference kind of of the sheets. And this one's thinner, so when you pick at it, it comes up easier than if you're trying to pick away the thicker one, which is the one that actually has the dots. And you would just place your die cut with the back of it facing those gray dots. I want you in between there. You kind of apply it or run it through your machine, but it does come with instruction on how to use them. So there you go. And then they're ready to go, right? Uh, just stick them right down. You do have your marquee refill and cutting folder um, if you don't own a marquee you can just put it to the side but uh, this is just a refill for your marquee and that's always great to have um, these dies will go through any machine that cut thin metal dies though and I get that question quite often they're all interchangeable um, across brands and you know machines for the most part uh, look at this oh my gosh okay so let me look at the instruction because I believe these are layering on some of these so yeah, so look at this. How cute. I know the other day I had Din, I had Din done a, a flamingo card and I put the leg going this way like it was bent, you know, like a knee. <laughs> and one of my subscribers mentioned I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even notice. But yeah, it's supposed to go the other way because they've been backwards. Uh, but anyhow. Uh, or backwards for us, right? <laughs> Anyhow, uh, you have the bird there and then some accent pieces um, and then a little bit more. So you can have a little bit of something here and then a little bit more there. Um, again, your bird and then two different accent pieces. Now, of course, for me, I would do this, the lightest color, and then darker and darker. Um, it would be hard to get a darker tone and then put a lighter one over it the way it's showing here because unless you bleach it out, maybe some bleach or something. But yeah, I don't know that anybody's going to want to play with bleach, so we're not going to do that. But yours, I would go lightest to darkest is all I'm saying on those. Um, look at the little toucan. Oh my gosh. So we have him and they stamped him in blue. And then you do have some white spots left, so that's great. So this will work out whatever color you want to use. And then this um, uh, accent piece here on this third layer, you're going to want to think about that. So you probably want a lighter bird so this darker this piece can kind of pop right so just look at those same thing here you have your little beak you have your toucan and you have the accent pieces um, again I would make that the darkest and this guy lighter um, our little bird it looks like it can layer up so the bird body then the accent pieces like this orange area and then the blue um, that tucks in there I think it stamps over the orange. I'm not sure. It looks like it would have space for it. So maybe on that one you don't have to think about too much as far as your colors. And then like little flowers. And look at the little starfish. And you have your pineapple, a smaller pineapple. Cute little flowers. And then they have dyes with those. And back here we have just dyes that are just greenery, which I love. I love, love, love tropical leaves. I can't have too many of them. So this one has a larger guy, and we'll talk about how larger because it's a pretty good size. And then this one, and then this one, it's almost like a feather, but it's more like a a frond, right? A palm frond. Uh, are they called fronds? <laughs> I know. Anyway. Um, I love this frame. It looks like a postage stamp. How cute would that be to make like, a little vignette and like, you know, wish you were here kind of thing. Uh, from the whole or welcome to our and then, you know, flock. So you have ways to mix and match the wording. You go wild. It's your birthday. Birds of a feather. You know, sunshine on my mind. Pickled tink for you. Fly. Pickled tink? No, no, no. <laughs> Tickled pink for you. Fly high. That is so funny. Paradise found. And then look at this one. Beautiful palm tree. 
You just have some leaves, some little like dragonflies, and some little Sorry, um, some little starfish, and like little flowers. And then here they just have some idea of how you want to do. It. I was gonna do something similar to this, is what I was thinking about. I think I'm gonna put the greenery like here with the frame, get that little flamingo down in there, something like that. Okay, so um, layering, right? So we have all these things, and I mean they're a good size. I think we have the dies that maybe I'll measure those better. Yeah, that's probably what I'll do. But um, you have your accent pieces of course you have your chart there to tell you how to um, use them aloha i mean look how big that flower is lovely so again not small these are some oversized stamp sets too they're pretty large the two cans and they're facing each other which i love and same thing with these little guys if you're using them they're kind of if you're using both they're going to face each other in a way i mean look at that palm tree nice size um i don't know that there's a die for the palm tree yeah so let me measure that one for you um, really cute for like a background kind of thing. I think I'm going to use some of the new pattern paper, which, um, depending on when you're watching, may or may not be available, but I'll have it linked as soon as it is available. Um, it is almost, yeah, I'd say four and a quarter-ish tall, and almost, you know, just over three inches wide, so really cool. And all those sentiments there, and then look at these guys. I mean, look at this one. Crazy. It's like almost three and three quarters inches tall. And like two and seven eighths wide. I mean, this frame is like three and a quarter square, I would say. I mean, these are really good size, two and a half. The height of this guy is about three and a half. This guy's kind of ducking down, but he's about three inches. Um, and our bird, again, just so you know, it's like one and three quarter. They're good size. Really nice. So, let me grab some cardstock. I am going to do the stamping for our bird and think everything else is just going to be die cut and then obviously our sentiment. So, uh, I'll be right back. Papers, I do want it to be you know, really full, but not super busy. So, I'm thinking of using the back side and maybe something, let me see here, from the greenery. Let's see, what's this one? Yellow? Ooh, let's go with the yellow. Just so my green fronds and leaves and things pop. So it's the back side of this guy. I'm going to, this is a standard A2 size, just cut in half. So five and a half by eight and a half. I'm going to score this at four and a quarter. Right, so, so yes, and we're going to score good. this at four and a quarter. Just getting that nice and straight. And we're going to use our scoring tool on that. And then um, the topper paper I'll be using is again this one so five and three eighths by four and a, an eighth that's I what i like you can, so you can do something like four by five and a quarter that's a nice matte layer or just the whole topper cover the whole thing four and a quarter by five and a half or any iteration of that that you like so that was five and three eighths by four and an eighth and i'll just go ahead and glue that down to get started and then we'll start um, our die cutting and stamping and things so for my stash i just pulled out a bunch of different colors of green i think i'll have this one of this guy because he's a big boy and I'm going to go ahead and cut it from the um, metallic green that I have here and then maybe a couple of this guy you know, maybe two of those and like three of these okay just have a variety of those guys and I'm also going to go ahead and cut this guy probably just with some white paper let it pop and be really pristine and cute so I'll be right back like to put as many things as I can at once and that works out great for me so we have that guy this is actually the back side of some yellow paper and I have a couple things stuck in here still so pop those out ready for the next time and so let's see here there'll be that big guy somewhere in there and some other greenery you know I'm just I just cut a ton just to have some to play with. I'm not really. I'm just kind of showing the idea. Maybe I'll put some of the of the other green down here. I was gonna have this, and then our little like um, flamingo kind of out here, and then her, the legs down through there. So it looks kind of postcardish. I don't know, something like that. Okay, so let me clean up a little bit and grab some paper to stamp our flamingo on. You can definitely start off with like a light color pink paper and you know stamp on that if you like. I'll probably just go with white paper. 
and I'll be right back. So we have that, and I grabbed just some white paper here, and we do our stamping. I will say I grabbed both of these because in my mind I always forget which one is pink and which one is what the other name of the other one is. So I looked online right now at Diamond Press on HSN, sorry, dot com. And there are only four colors left of these. There's, I think, oranges, pinks, warm, and browns. So this one is actually warm, and I guess citrus should let me know that, right? So these are the warms. And I went ahead and put a, a little label on there, and this one's pink. So these are both still available. There says there's only like a handful of each, and the rest of the colors have sold out. So I will ask Diane Press if they're going to be restocking that or however, but for right now, there are only a handful of these colors left. And the brown is really nice, I will say, because it does have different shades of brown, and you never know, sometimes you want like a tiny brown, sometimes you want like a dark, dark brown, or, you know, more orangey brown, so it's nice to have those options. But, um, okay, I was thinking about having this guy facing that way, that's what I prefer. So I'm going to take this one. Again, let's go with the lightest color. I'm going to put it right up here, I'm sure the dye is going to be right on there. I do want to, you know, make sure <laughs> that his little leg isn't being funny, so when I go to cut this, it's still pretty lined up, you know? I think that's pretty good. So just straighten out the leg. A lot of times when you have a stamp that has, like, something long like that or gangly, you want to just, like, sometimes just drop it. If you just drop it, it'll just kind of settle where it needs to be. But you definitely want to make sure it's straight or however it needs to be right for that project. So I'm going to start with the very lightest taffy. I forgot to grab this guy. And people are asking me recently, where'd you get that, like, what this is, this tool? And I usually link it, you guys, so it'll be in the description box. It might be in, like, this little shopping bag. But it's the Diamond Press stamping tool, and it comes with some chamois. It comes with the tape. Um, I'm probably forgetting something. Oh, the stamp cleaner, I think? Yes. And the tool. So I'll link that there for you guys. And I think I'm going to do it one more time because I really want that look to be more solid. <laughs> Sorry about that. Like a uh, jingling sound there. Alright, that's pretty solid there. And let's see, what is, actually I'm going to wipe that off because I'm going to keep stamping. I, do that. I normally have this a little bit further from me, but so I have to kind of reach over to grab it. So yesterday when I was making videos, I thought, oh, I should keep it closer to me. And then now I couldn't find it because <laughs> I forgot that I moved it. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. That's one of the chamois. It comes with a teal one and a pink one. Okay. So let's see. I mean, clearly these are going to be the other colors. I believe it's this one and this one, but let's just go look at our sheet so we can make sure. Yes, yeah, so it's the one that has like a little round it, so then we can kind of see where those are going to be. So it's going to be like in the face and then over here. So let me, I'm going to go with the longer one first and then I'll do the accent one. But I'll still go darkest. So I'm going to go, I'm just doing this, I'm skipping ahead. Basically, I'm eyeballing this. I'm trying to see where this is at completely. I can. What happens is, as you lay this out, what I'm looking at, the stamps kind of bevel in. You know, if you look at a stamp, it kind of bevels in, like where it's actually going to be stamping. So it's wider here and it's going to be thinner at the surface that actually touches your paper. So I'm just looking at that and seeing where it's going to actually be on the leg. You know, this one right there there by the little tail area that guy's curving around this loop and then in the beak so I suppose if you wanted to you can make some of these different colors so let me see what I'm trying to do is I think I'm gonna grab some black and just make his little beak black and everything else that dark pink and you can you know if you want to really be you know taking some care you can do black legs. Um, maybe I'll do that. Maybe that's what I'll do. Let's start. And I want his little face area black. And then make sure I can get it there. And his little legs. 
So I'm just going for it, but what I'm going to do is wipe away what I don't want, which is this part right here that's like feather right there. And I'm going to have to do it a couple times. And you can wish me luck. <laughs> so there you go. Not bad, not bad. I'm actually kind of okay with that. But let's just do it one more time, especially in his little face area over here and kind of his legs. Again, if I get some on here, I'll wipe it down. Okay. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to wipe the whole thing off. Just to get that black ink off. And then I'm going to go with the darkest pink that I'm going to use. And just go in here. And if it gets on the legs, to be honest, you probably won't notice. But I'm still going to take a little bit of care to wipe that away with my hand. Let's get that guy on there. And that looks good. I'm going to be happy with that. And then let's go bring in that middle color. I'm going to put this guy away. This is the one for this guy. So it's going to go over his little eye area. Um, and we can take a look again just to make sure. So if I'm looking in here, it's kind of like in the little eye area there. And some here and some on this back side. I think that looks pretty good. And we can go with the middle kind of pink color. I'm just going to go with this blossom. Not too, too bright. And again, you can separate out what you would want in his head area if you want on that same stamp. That looks good. I'm going to do it one more time. And I think that'll be good. Look at that, guys. That's pretty. Okay, let me clean up. I'll be right back. I'm putting away my inks. If you ever have them and you're kind of going like this and you're like, oh, I can't get them to stack or it's, you know, bothering you, basically just look for like ends. So see how this is flat, flat. This one has that space in between. You really want all the spaces together or all the flat sides together. That's all you're looking for. So if you're trying to get it and you're like, and you keep moving and, you know, just look for wherever you have like ends, right? And then it'll click in for you. Um, ask me why I know that. <laughs> so was like, okay, um, let's see. We need to make an aperture. I don't think I'm just going to go for cutting this guy out because, you know, who knows. So um, I guess I can use this paper itself. Why not? So we're just going to go like this. Cut the whole thing off. This isn't anything special. It's just some heavyweight paper I have in my stash, so I don't mind cutting into that and just kind of using it as a drop shadow now if you want to, or as a drop shadow using it as a guide if you want to drop shadow this I would definitely cut this from the color of paper that you want to drop shadow that way you're not just wasting a piece of paper and then I always look for the flatter area that I can kind of hinge and I'm going to say that's it <laughs> so we'll see you know actually probably better hinge it that way wouldn't it let's go this one okay I do like to look for a larger area to hinge that's flat. The reason I say that is because you don't want it to... When you go to hinge it, if it's all bumpy and weird, it's just going to be awkward. So um, we're going to pop this guy out. And again, you can use this for something else. One of my gals here says she likes to die cut first and then stamp things. So if you want to do that and then put your stamp on there, you know, go for it. Um, I'm going to cut a little bit of this away because I, I can do some stamping on that later or something. Okay. So don't remove it, just hinge it up. And let's see, and sometimes I show this, sometimes I don't. I just describe it, which I guess I should just show it. It just depends on where you are in your journey, but hopefully this trick helps you guys out. So I'm eyeballing that. That looks pretty good. Make sure that's back in that groove. This isn't touching anything right now of paper there, so let me do that. Let me get another piece. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> I like touched it in a way that's... Uh, Eh, maybe from here to here. Okay. Definitely want to get yourself some edge so that you can get that guy going to tape onto. But let's see what happens. I'm holding it tight into this hand. I'm holding it nice and tight so it doesn't shift too much. Just kind of pull that away. Let's get 
this guy separate from there. <laughs> he really wants to stay over here. Oh my gosh. Look how delicate it is. It even has cutouts right there, so it makes it look really nice. Perfect. Okay, let's put this guy together. These things back. And I was like, oh, maybe I should have drop shadowed him. Actually, since I have both of these, let's glue them together to make him nice and sturdy. So, let's just get some glue. Why not? I didn't think about that, to be honest. I could have been doing that this whole time every time I do a an uh, aperture. Just glue it to the back of this guy, and you have more sturdiness. That's actually really good for this card, especially because I'm going to kind of put him in there. Okay. So, if you can imagine, he's going to be kind of like this. And I thought, maybe something fun. I don't know. And then some of these guys can also come outside of this with him, more like this. I think that'd be cute. Uh, should we make it a little bit up, a little bit like that? That'd be fun. Okay, let's stick these together since I like the way that looks, and then we'll go from there. So I need a little glue like in here somewhere. And I said we're gonna make it at a little angle. That's fun. So let's put that there. Let's do a little something like that. If he's straight, that's good. And then I'm just eyeballing where I might need some glue <laughs> behind here, and this can go up in the front, right? And if that's, I know it looks crooked because I want the frame to look crooked by the time I get this guy straight, you know, maybe a little bit more so it's more obvious. Let's do a little bit more. There we go, something like that. And then maybe we can bring this down a little bit. Actually, let's bring this guy down a little bit. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so that's one piece. Let me let that kind of set so up before we move on. Getting there. Look how pretty these are too. Oh my gosh, they cut out so nicely. This guy will be like down here. Let's go ahead and stick this guy down. He's definitely gonna go all the way up like that. And I am in love with this die cut. <laughs> so pretty. Okay, I'm going to play a little with how I want the positioning, and um, then we'll kind of stick things down. I love the way this looks, so I'm just going to... It's not too detrimental here I'm like I can probably move these but I like whenever I put something where I like it I just kind of don't move it too much and just start sticking things down so there's that and I'll pop a little glue behind these guys um, I just kind of tuck those guys in obviously you saw in the video there and then we'll do what we're gonna do with the rest of our card and I'll be right back so just glue glue I'll this and while that is setting up I'm going to just put a little more glue back here. Obviously, you don't want these guys. The reason it's still moving around quite a bit is the reason this. it's moving around still on this paper is that new Scandinavian finish that's, you know, it's not as porous, right? So it's just taking a minute. So what I'm going to do is put that to the side with a little something on top of this. And my machine, not my lotion. Put something heavy on top of that. Uh, I'm trying to debate how I want this. I think maybe I'll stick this down flat here and then maybe have some dimensionals up here. So I'm just going to turn that over and get some dimensionals on the back there. Let's see. Oh, these guys. I was like, do I want to cut some? But I have these smaller ones. So just along the top here, I'm going to have some dimensionals to help me set that out. And I'll take the backings off and I'll show you what it looks okay. like. Again. I think that's enough time there. And on this guy, I just put some supports kind of in this top area, and then I'll just put some glue down at this bottom area. So I'm just going to put a ton of glue. I don't really know what's going to be touching or where, so I'm just putting glue all in here to support the rest of that. So let's take this guy back, and I want him standing straight. So I'm just looking at his little legs, <laughs> or hers, and... Something like that. Okay, so I'm gonna hold it down here. And then there's some dimensionals up here. 
which I think look really nice. Okay, so I'm going to hold that down for a little bit, just at this bottom part. The top part has dimensionals, and I'll be right back. I did put a little half weight on here. While that's doing that, I'm just going to stamp the Paradise Found. I think that's cute. And then maybe we'll um, put some black paper behind this or however. So um, again, I'll just stamp in this corner and then cut it out carefully. Maybe I'll do a little dovetailing. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, if you have dies, obviously we have lots of dies in our stash that would cut a little banner. You can definitely run it through that. But I'm just going to stamp that, cut it out, and layer it up with some black paper behind it. Guys, So I've been struck with an artsy feel. You know what? When I stamped it, I thought, oh, what if we cut it out? And then uh, I'm just going to cut it by hand. And then make it two words and put them on there. Just kind of more artsy. So I'm just going to cut that. You can still run it through your, um, you know, cutting whatever it is that you want if you feel like you need to. But I'm just going to cut these in half and go ahead and back those on black paper. And then we'll have two separate words that we're going to play with. Okay, so just like that. And of course, I, I always feel like I got a show. So <laughs> there you go. And I can tell I'm going to cut some off this bottom part. And there are two separate words. So, I mean, I did trim them down individually kind of after I cut them. So maybe we separate them first and then do those little bits, but that's fun, right? Okay. I mean, it can even just be the word paradise, right? But I think that's fun. Ooh, okay. Should we mess with them a little bit like this? Um, I do like that. So let's see. We need to support the back of this part if we're going to do it that way. So a little one there. And whoopsie, one on the other corner. I have glue and ink and all kinds of things stuck to my fingers right now. <laughs> so let's put a little glue there. So it's about the same, right? So paradise found. And I'll put a little supports on the back of this one just like I did the other one and just glue it down. Oh my gosh, you guys, are you kidding? This is so pretty. I love having played with the wording like that. That's really, really fun. And I think it really goes with the style of the card. So there it is. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Thank you so much, Diamond Press, for sending these items for review. I'll have images coming up. I'll have the links in the description box again, possibly in the little shopping bag here. Thanks for watching, guys. Again, this oh was goodness, brought I think I said March. So <laughs> you will... Uh, you know, see these uh, for the May 14th craft show. Um, if, you know, the price changes between now and then, if you want to pick it up early, you can definitely get your price match. Um, as far as shipping, you know, I don't know that right now. I know people ask me if I know if there's going to be a craft cart. I'm assuming there will be. HSN has been opening up the craft cart sometimes a day early and then the day after also of the craft show or the craft day. I don't know that yet, but hopefully in the subsequent videos, if I get that info for you, I will definitely let you know. A lot of times I'll do a short video just saying, hey, you know, there's a craft cart or the craft cart's now open. Uh, but just keep an eye out for that if you would like. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, the links will be there and I'll have images coming up and I'll see you all at the next one. Bye now.